hopefully that gave you an idea of the new direction our show is taking. Each feature in the program expands on the native perspective articulated by members of indigenous tribes from all over the world, not just here in the U.S. We'll start at the macro level, like human activities on a national or even a global scale, and then scale down to bioregionalism or what's going on in your own backyard. Things like what you should grow in your garden or what to buy or not buy at the grocery store. We did a show like that a while ago, and our next segment will take you back to one of our best stories, organics. Hello and welcome to Sustainable Today. I'm April Westfall and I'm here at the Birds and Bees Community Farm in Oregon City. And this is John and this is Bev and they've been so kind as to invite us out here so that we can learn about community supported agriculture. Usually when I'm explaining community supported agriculture, I use the metaphor of a magazine subscription. Because with a magazine subscription, <coughs> You sign up ahead for a magazine, you, you send in your order form and everything, but you don't know what's going to be in the next issue of the magazine. Our customers sign up ahead, and they don't know from one week to another exactly what they're going to be getting, but they do know that they're going, going to be getting locally grown. Everything we offer is, is right from our farm locally grown, absolutely fresh, um, pick the day of um, vegetables and, and fruit. So what, what would you say um, is your mission here at Birds and Bees? What are you, what are you hoping to accomplish? We want to model a small farm that's very sustainable and very community oriented, something that the neighborhood, the community can depend on. Well, we would love to um, get a little tour of, of your farm and whatever you'd like to show us. That would be wonderful. This is a juice apple here. That's one of the reasons why we're not thinning it. Um, and um, it, it makes a nice juice, but it's, it's not a real good eating apple. Yeah. <laughs> um, over here we have a satsuma plum tree. Um, in back of it there's a liberty apple tree, another satsuma. So how does this work? Do the, do the customers actually get to, do they come and pick their own food? Do they, can they, do they help with the watering? Pretty much they've <laughs> hired us to do those things. We do have a, a certain amount of participation by the shareholders who come and in exchange for a credit, they may work a few hours. Hi, Jeline. Hello, April. Hi. Um, so you are a customer here at the farm. If you wouldn't mind telling me um, how long you've been coming here and what keeps you coming back? Um, actually, um, several years ago, I read an article in a magazine that's no longer available. It's Welcome Home, and they talked about CSAs. And so I got online looked around for CSAs in the community and found Birds and Bees and went out in Canby. And Birds and Bees had a waiting list. So we got on the waiting list, came out, took a look at the place, really loved it. It was kid friendly. Um, kids could come out here and actually get to witness, participate in how farming happened, gardening, um, organic practices. Um, we did the Canby one for one year, but this was something that was putting more gas into the commute than we wanted. And then it opened up and we were here. And we've been here ever since. So I was pregnant with Rachel, so I know it was been five and a half years. Um, we keep coming back because my husband and I every year kind of make a little um, vote on what is important to us and having the kids see that um, where our food is coming from, how we can contribute to it, it's organic, keeping it sustainable, that's it's just high up on our priority every year. And you f so you feel like this is um, good education for your kids? It's excellent. Um, we have other kids that think eggs come from the grocery store, and we know that eggs come from chickens. So, oh, yeah. so do, you, do you guys actually um, get involved with the gardening too? Um, we have. 
it keeps growing because mm -hmm. the kids' attention gets a little bit better. But we come out every week, and John gives us a duty, and we come thin plums, we thin apples, we weed. Um, it's good for the kids because if we teach them this generation, then what's going to happen to the next generation? And I think that one of the things my husband and I really looked at was that both sets of our grandparents were farmers um, or were involved in farming. Our parents were, if we started to live on farms and moved into the cities, and we had huge gardens. And as my husband and I were able to go back to the kind of the farming areas and take a look what it was, our kids can't do that. Our, our parents, their grandparents, were not able to go back and see the farm and see how animals lived. So we've lost that connection. And this way we can come back and they can at least understand what our heritage is and they can understand the practices that will you know, continue to the next generation. We'll show you some of the things that we're growing <clears throat> in here. <clears throat> the cows are coming out now. So we have some beets here that um, <clears throat> will be going <clears throat> to our members and, and <clears throat> I'll just gather a few here, get a sense of <clears throat> what they look like. We also have some carrots here, and uh, these are these are small here, but carrots are very popular um, <clears throat> among our customers. It's something that parents can give to their kids, and think this is this is nut nutritious for them. Um, fresh harvested like this, they're, they're sweet. This, this was from a planting of cilantro and, you know, we didn't, we didn't harvest everything, but we let a few of them go to seed because all these little flowers here are excellent uh, food for uh, beneficial insects that, uh, um, little wasps that will parasitize um, pests in the in the vegetables and so we let um, a certain number of things particularly things with with small flowers um, grow in amongst our um, vegetables because they offer habitat for the beneficials and this is part of how we can succeed doing things organic and not having a lot of pest problems is because we're using, um, we're working with nature rather than against what nature wants to do. Busy all the time. You're still can, busy all can, the time. Can be busy all the time, but, you don't have to be social but we're, all the time. we're not harvesting all the time. Yeah. <laughs> it gives us time to, to plant, and to weed, to water. Um, and maybe catch our breath. These are our compost bins and this is where everything goes in to start with and then we just pitchfork it over to the next one until at the very end it's soil. It's finished compost ready to be used whatever we we need um, some rich uh, material. This by using compost as material we're, we're recycling everything and we're avoiding having to buy, um, well, it, it means we don't have to use synthetic fertilizers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you mentioned the farm is about, was it 67 acres? And the, the farm the is, land the land trust, trust is. The land trust is 67 acres. Uh -huh. And it's wooded. Mostly wooded. So the farm itself is just a small part of that. And how, how, what, what percentage or how many acres is just the farm itself, would you say, roundabout? We farm in total nine acres. Uh -huh. Most most of that is, is pasture and, and hay field and just a little over two acres is orchard and field crops and out of those two acres we f feed about 27 families on a year-round basis and we do that by um, a lot of succession planting. Succession planting, planting what do you yeah, mean by yeah. that? that? That means that when one crop is finished, we put another in its place. Okay, year round. Y year round. Oh, wonderful. Thank you so much. Yeah. These are beautiful. And thank you, John, for having us out to your farm and sharing all of your knowledge with us. Yeah. Delightful. Well, thank you, Bev. You too. For, uh, it's fun having you out. 
Thank you. Yeah. We'd love to come back. Good. Yeah. Have a good evening. And I'm April Westfall, bringing you the tools to be more sustainable today.